Mm. There we go. We're going to cover some things in uh, G Suite for Education that will help you in your virtual learning. Um, if you are completely new to G Suite, uh, some of this may may start more questions than it answers, but hopefully the majority of the people on here, um, we're up to 80 with uh, 120 signed up, so um, have some background in it. Uh, those of you who are new to the district, we have a list of, of you who are new to us, but not necessarily new to teaching, and I think we have one beginning teacher that um, we have that we will try to touch base later and make sure that you feel comfortable with uh, the software that we have access to. So I'm gonna go ahead and present my screen. All right, and so, as I said, we're a G Suite district, so that means we use um, Gmail for our email, and we have um, Google Drive, and we use that for our um, files, uh, storage in the cloud. So Google Drive is basically cloud storage. Since we are a G Suite district, we have educational accounts. Those educational accounts have no maximum storage, so you can see the storage amount when you're in your drive right here. So you don't ever have to worry about me reaching a maximum limit. On your um, Office 365 cloud storage, you do have a limit. Um, on your personal Gmail, um, you have uh, a limit because your Gmail account also gives you access to a drive, but you have a limited storage there. So we have unlimited storage as an education district. You have your um, new button up here, and again, for those of you who are, are comfortable with this, I'm just going to go through it quickly, just get everybody on the same page. Um, you can create folders here, upload files, or upload entire folders. You should always, always, always back your files up to Drive. Um, if you are saving them on your desktop, if you're saving them on your My Documents on your desktop, then they are not backed up in the cloud, and if something happens to your desktop, and um, the hard drive has to be replaced or reformatted, those files will be lost. So if you can get in the habit of uploading everything to your drive, you'll be um, never have to worry about losing anything. Google Docs is, is Google's version of um, their equivalent to Word. Um, it does have a lot of functionality, but not all functionality. If you really liked using Developer in Word, then you're going to want to use Office 365 to do uh, your Word documents. But you can upload Word documents here, and it will not convert them if, unless you ask it to. So um, you can go into uh, Docs and start a blank uh, blank document, but you can also um, look at some of their templates. So just in case you weren't aware that these existed, uh, and these are constantly being added to, but there are templates in here, um, and there are ways to even add uh, templates that you would like to share out or you can just start from your own document. Um, you can also do Sheets, which is the equivalent of Excel. Again, not all the functionality, but quite a bit, and they're constantly adding updates. Uh, there are also some templates. I just want you to see those in case. And then here's that Submit Template button. So if there's something that you're real, you're real happy about um, and you want to share it, then um, you could upload it here. This notice, it says Curry Tuck. So this is our domain. So anybody in Curry Tuck who uploads a template here is only shared within our domain here. If you click over to this tab, that's where general templates are. And you can see they're by category. So again, I just wanted you to know that these are available. You may find something useful here. Um, you might not. Slides is their equivalent of PowerPoint. Again, um, you can do a blank presentation, but there is a template site for that as well. And again, these are, if you're over here, it's ones that we have shared um, here within District. Like if you wanted a Jeopardy template um, to do a game, um, but there are some general ones as well. So in case you didn't know anything about the template gallery, I wanted you to know it was there. Down here for more, these are all the additional options you have access to. Google Forms we use a lot. You used it to register for this session. Um, you can use them for quizzes. You can use them to collect survey results. Um, you can use them just to get some kind of uh, formative, um, quick feedback. Um, there's all kinds of things that you can use them for. Here are some templates that are already set up, and then you, um, you know, 
open it up, copy it to your drive, and then you modify it as you um, see fit. We don't have any that have been shared uh, through Curry Tech County, but you could submit some here if you feel like it would be helpful for other people in the district to be able to use. Um, some of the others that are real common that we'll go over briefly is Google Drawings. That is like a virtual poster board. Um, some of these other things we're going to skip for today uh, just because they, we don't think that they will be the most helpful for virtual. We're going to focus more on what will be helpful for virtual learning, but we could come back to some of the others um, at another time. So right here, when you're in here, this is going to be everything that's in your drive. Um, you can alter the way you look at it. You can sort it um, by name up, A to Z. Down. Yes? Sorry, I thought somebody had a question. No, I don't see it over here. Okay. So you can sort A to Z or Z to A. Um, you can search, and that usually is one of the things that drives people the most crazy is trying to find things. You can search by what type of file it is. You can search by um, who specifically. If I was looking for something that Kathy Blades had made um, and I couldn't find it, um, you can search down here by specific words and all of these other things to get more advanced um, results. So if you're looking for something, that search feature is very helpful. You don't have to do the advanced search. You can just look for um, whatever the word, key, uh, phrase, um, date, those kinds of things um, to try and narrow down when you're trying to find something in here. Shared drive. Now, this is something that you have to be given access to. So there are lots of things on my screen that you probably don't have on yours. Um, but shared drives are like, for those of you who've been in the district a long time, we used to have H drives, but those were housed uh, on site on a server here. But shared drives are for um, those who are specifically invited, and they do not have, you lose your ownership. Like Curry Tech County Schools becomes the owner, technically, of whatever document is in their folders. So when I retire, the people who have access to the AIG folder wouldn't lose any of that documentation when my account is archived. So that's the difference between shared drive files and my drive files. Now, you can keep them in your drive and then you can make a copy and put them in a shared drive so you have multiple if you're comfortable with that. If you're working on a group of, let's say, curriculum documents or you're, uh, those of us were working on return to learn things this summer, or whatever the case may be, you can have it in multiple places. But when it's in your drive and you created it or you've copied it and made it your own, you are technically the owner. When it's here in the shared drive, the group, Curry Tech County Schools, becomes um, the owner. So when somebody leaves, changes jobs, goes to another school system, retires, those files don't go away. Um, they stay there for the group. If you're looking for something that you know wasn't yours originally but was shared with you, um, you can always look under the shared with me. That's what these are for. Recent is going to bring up anything that you've been working on recently. As you can tell, we were working on PD um, registration, so that's what's coming up for mine. Anything you star is something that you feel like is extremely important and you need to get back to it quickly. Um, and you can unstar those later and that will change change it. So. That's just the basics of this part. Over here, this is um, Google Drive is available offline. What that means is, and that's if you enable it. So if I lose internet access and I'm working on a document, I can continue working on that document as long as I have this set up correctly on my settings for working offline. It just isn't going to sync. So if, say, Angel Lasher and I are working on a document together, but I'm, I'm working in my car while my kid's doing their, I know we're not doing sports right now, but baseball practice or whatever, and I don't have internet access, I can keep working on it, but she's not going to see the changes on her end until I get back to um, having connectivity, and then it will sync, um, and she will be able to see the changes that I made. That's how kids were able to get the assignment, take the device home, whether they had internet or not, do what they needed to do, then they came back the next day, and once they were back um, on campus and had an internet signal, it would sync, and um, they could, 
you know, show their work or turn in or whatever. Um, that's how they can work offline. This is anytime you need support, you can click on this. It's uh, intuitive systems wherever you are in the system. It'll try to anticipate what it is you're looking for. This is always your settings toggle. You can go in here and um, update anything. I mean, you are limited to some things, but you can change the how you view it if um, you want to to modify that. Um, you can change what you're notified about, um, and you can um, manage your apps through here. And this is your apps launcher. Uh, some people call it a waffle, Rubik's Cube, whatever. But this gives you access to not only the items you saw over here, like docs, slides. You also have access to things like um, Classroom from over here and Jamboard. Jamboard is the interactive whiteboard, and we're going to spend a little bit of time going um, over that. These things, you can move them around. So if you want to, the stuff that you have, uh, use more often, you can move it around so that it's uh, higher up on your apps launcher um, if you choose. I just wanted you to know that that's available. So that's the basics of this. Um, to give access to documents, so let me just pick something. Um, we'll just pick something recent. So say I was going to um, share this document, happens to be a sheet. The share button up here, it looks a little bit different in the different uh, apps that you're in. But you want to be very careful about your sharing and that you give people the correct rights to do what it is that you need them to do. So right here, I can type whoever's name um, I want to share this with. And then I'm going to decide over here how I want them to have access to it. So if you're doing a collaborative document with your kids and you want them to be able to modify it, you need to make sure they have editing rights. Otherwise, they're going to blow up your email saying they can't get in it. Uh, if you don't want them to change it, you need to make sure they have you only rights. Um, that also includes if you're, if you're sharing documents with your colleagues, your PLC, you're working together on something. If you don't want them to edit it, you want to give them view only rights. They can, all, they can copy it in here, like they can do a make a copy and uh, rename it and modify it to their heart's content, but um, you want it to keep yours the same, then you're only going to give them view rights. Commenter rights, that's if you want to give them access to be able to, to use the comment feature and, and put comments and resolve comments on the document. It gives them a little bit of um, interactivity with it, but it doesn't allow them to change it without you having that, uh, you know, you having that um, power to decide. Um, you can include messages here to explain why you're sharing this with them, uh, or you can take that off and say they don't need to be notified, they just need to have access to it in the folder. Um, you can go up here to um, settings also and change uh, these radio buttons if that is uh, not something you want them to be able to use. Um, so that's share with groups of people. You can also do the shareable link down here, but understand, and this becomes very frustrating to some people, if you're trying to share this with just students in your Google Classroom, then this should be fine. If they're logging in with their Curry Tuck email, then they're gonna be able to see it as long as you have this, anyone um, in this group with the link can view, or anyone in the group can edit or anyone in the group can comment. If you want it to be accessible to someone outside the domain, say you were gonna share something with parents and they were gonna be accessing it through their um, personal email account, you have to make sure that you have anyone with the link checked. And if you don't want them to edit it, do you only want them to view it, you need to make sure that those editing rights are the way that you want them to be so that nothing gets um, changed with that you didn't want it to happen that way so and then you would just copy it here you can go into email chat um, dojo your classroom however you were going to share that link out so sharing rights are extremely important settings we talked about creating folders um, it's real easy to create folders in here you can see how some folders are already set up and then you can just drop and drag files so when you do a classroom, well, I'll show you down here. When you do Google Classroom, it's automatically going to create some folders for you. 
I don't have it on there. As soon as you create a Google Classroom, it's going to pop up. You see how we had meet recordings here? That wasn't a folder I created. So if I create a classroom or I am add, I'm added as a student in a classroom, I will um, see that automatically. Here we go, the red folder. It will pop up in here. And it will automatically start those. And then it will start folders within folders based on the classes that you create or that you are a part of, like a co-teacher of. So you don't create these. These are generated. It's an automatic process when you create a Google Classroom and it goes directly to your drive. Um, so your items, your documents, uh, you know, all things that have to do with that class can then be found um, in here in addition to going into the classroom. So you can see that it's automatically added. You can see that people have access because it shows you the little picture here so you know somebody else has access to this. You can tell who the owner of the document is um, and all of those things from just the classroom files. But you can go in and make your own folders as well. And these are called breadcrumb materials up here. So anytime you go further in, you will see that it adds another link to the breadcrumb trail. Um, and if I don't want to go all the way back out, lots of people use the back button here, but I can just say, well, I just want to go back to the classroom folder. I don't want to go back out to my drive um, or I'm done with this. You also notice there's a little drop down here. So you can always click that and you can rename the folder. You can change the color of the folder if you care about any of those things um, to try and find easier access. You can get a link to the folder itself. That way you don't want to share every single thing in here. Um, and right now it's restricted to only people, uh, only people added can get this, but you can change that um, as well. You can copy the link and then share it. So you don't have to share each individual document. You could share whole folders at a time um, by getting the link or up here by adding the people. You can also download the whole folder if you want. I would strongly encourage you not to re remove a folder unless you're absolutely sure. Although you can go back over here to the trash and it will generally stay there. I believe it is for 30 days before that's automatically um, emptied. So, and you can archive classes so you don't have to, you know, go through and delete everything to, to be done with it. So, how to upload files. <clears throat> All of your sources are going to be over here. Um, this is going to show what you've been working on in that on that device. Uh, Chromebooks have very limited a hard drive space. It's a it's just a motherboard, and there's a small amount of storage there. Um, but if you needed to upload something, you could. Um, I'll just upload, and then it'll show you down here that it is being uploaded. Um, and then you can organize it from here. It says it's already a version, so I can add it as a separate version, or it's just going to um, copy over top of it. There's a drop down here that I can move it out of the way, or I, I can just say, okay, I'm done with that notification. I don't care about it anymore. So that's how you would upload things. If you're inside a folder, it will save you a lot of time because then you don't have to go back later and try to clean all this up. But it's not that it's not bad to um, drag and drop things. And you can look at it in different methods. You can look at it in um, grid form or you can look at it in list form. And again, you can drag and drop things and move them um, and put them in folders. And then you can move them again um, later by using the menu or dragging and dropping the file like that. So they're fairly, there's always a way in Google, if you're going to do things one way, you can do it uh, multiple ways. So say I open this document um, and I want to share it. You're going to look for things like this vertical ellipse. They're not always going to necessarily be in the same place when you're in here, but um, when you look for things like this, you always know that there's more, um, more you can do. So you can move it here or you can move it by dragging it and dropping it. Um, I can decide, well, I want this in my drive or I want to add this to a shared drive folder. It would have to be something you already have access to. But you, there are multiple ways that you can move things around. I know people get frustrated with their Google Drive um, at times because it can get a little chaotic. You need to think of your drive as like your digital filing cabinet. Um, 
and that's basically basically what it's there for. You can upload Word, Excel, PowerPoint files um, to Drive. It's not going to uh, change them unless you ask it to be changed. If you do uh, ask for it to be changed, some of the wording um, may, some of the formatting, not wording, but the formatting might be off a little bit. Like you can see the icon here. So this is a Word document. So if I click on this, um, it's going to open it in the format that you will, you know, see when you look at it. But I didn't like, let me find another one. This is an Excel spreadsheet. You see how it's just going to show you in view. Now, when I go to open it, I can convert it to a sheet. Right now, it's got the green with an X. So that is um, an Excel symbol. This is the Google symbol for sheets. So I can open it and convert it um, if I want. Um, know that just that when you do it with Word, sometimes the formatting um, with Word or PowerPoint might get a little bit off. So, um, but some people didn't know that they could they could upload those different file types. Naming conventions matter. So when you're saving things in here, you want to make sure that you name it in a way that you can find it again. Um, so you want to be very deliberate about how, how you are going to name things in here. Sharing rights we already talked about. Google's all about collaboration. So let me go back and see if we have any questions before we get into to this. Sandy, can you show the presentation whole screen? I'm doing it on my um, laptop, Kevin, sorry, instead of the um, desktop. I don't, it shouldn't have made a difference, but um, I will try to, I'll try to make my screen bigger on the next, um, when I go back in. And then, yes, you can pin people to the, the um, main screen. Okay. So, Back when you're in here, you can change your view. If you hold control and hit the um, plus sign, control, plus sign, control, plus sign, um, you can make your screen bigger. You can also do it right here. Um, conversely, if you want to make it smaller, it's control minus, control minus. Um, so those are just some shortcuts if, um, if that helps you. And then everything about about uh, Google is about collaboration. So when you're working in Google, in your Google Classroom, if you, for instance, want your students to do work on um, a slide presentation together, when you go in here and share it with your student group, sorry, it's taking a minute. So when you go in here and share it with your student group, you can um, add them one at a time, or um, if, like that's Island, you you are the the teacher, so you have the whole grade level. So if there's a um, you know K I E S fifth grade, you could add it through that way. Um, I wouldn't necessarily share it for a whole grade level if you're departmentalized and you have multiple classes. That would become uh, overwhelming for one uh, slide presentation if you were going to divide it out why that's having issues um, and it is going to ask you to try and name it and the reason is because you don't want a bunch of stuff in your drive that's called untitled that you have to waste time going back in and um, and seeing what it was so you're going to name it so when you share it with your kids um, I'm just going to pick some colleagues so I'm adding them here it's going to auto populate because you can see that it's automatically looking for people in our domain um, I'm giving them editing rights and I'm going to send it to them and then I'm going to say we're going to work on this together. So when you want to add more slides, you can go up here to insert. Of course, you can um, you can go to slide and new slide or you can do control M. And once you get used to the shortcut keystrokes, you kind of don't go back to those menus. So when I'm over here, I hit control M or I go to slide and insert slide and it's just going to add. If I want to change the way it looks, I can um, duplicate it and, and keep it exactly the same. Like I want to keep 
I want to uh, keep it the same and then just modify a piece of it. I can get rid of it. I can skip it. I can move it here or I can drag it. Um, this is the one that you'll probably use more often to say, well, I don't really want this format. I really want the tiles to be, the text to be side by side. Um, you do have a lot of flexibility in here, uh, so more so than you do in a doc. And you'll notice that when you move these around, you see those red lines. That just shows you that when you're centered vertically or horizontally or lined up with other boxes, it's just like up here on the right hand side. It just shows you as a guide to try and keep things straight. Um, but you can move things around. You can add text. You can change the layouts. You can do um, any number of things to just kind of make it your own. But when you're working with kids on it, you don't necessarily want them all in there changing that stuff. So you need to tell them up front whatever your class protocols are to say, well, this is what we're going to use and we're going to keep it that way. And then this is going to be um, Kathy's uh, group slide. So this is where they're going to put their information. So they have some structure. This was going to be, all right, so Shelly's in charge of a group. Um, this is going to be her group slide. So they need to make sure that they stay on theirs. Um, and so forth. And hopefully you've had some experience with this with colleagues doing different things, but um, it's just a, it's just kind of a management way to kind of keep people from, you know, going over top of each other um, and having a designated space to put their work if they're working together on this document. If somebody deletes it all, uh, which has happened when you have kids doing it, you notice this right here, it's going to say the last edit. And one of the nice things about Drive is it automatically saves. So it's, you're not going to have to worry about, did I save it? Is the computer going to go, you know, weird and I'm going to have to restart it and lose all my work? It doesn't happen in Drive. But you can click here, say a kid went in and um, deleted everybody's work, maybe accidentally, maybe not. But you can always click on that and go in here and you'll see your edits on here on the side. Um, and you can go in and restore previous versions um, to get the work back. Um, there's also always the vertical ellipse, the three dots, so that you can do some different things over here if you need to. Um, I can either restore this version or I can go back. So don't worry if things disappear or you need to undo um, something a kid did or uh, you have some a lot more flexibility in here to take care of things like that. And then you can also, and these the things that I'm showing you here with this edits, that works whether you're in Drive, that works whether you're in um, Docs, that works whether you're in Sheets, you still have this edit for any of them. You also have these comments. So say I'm going to tell, I need to let Kathy know um, something about her slide. So I'm going to highlight this particular part and I'm going to go up here. It looks like a speech bubble. I'm going to click comment. I'm going to add a comment, but I want it specifically now, if I don't put anything, I don't put her name or anything, then it's just going to be a comment on the slide. So anybody who's going through here is going to see it. But this is something that I want Kathy to specifically talk about with her group. So I'm going to do the plus sign. And I'm going to start typing her name like it is in her email. And you'll see that it populates up underneath. So I'm going to pick that. And I'm going to say, please meet with your group about what you are going to include in the slide or, or something like that. You can also include some links um, in there if you need to and I'm going to click assign to Kathy. So when I do this, she's actually going to get an email um, saying that she has this notification and it's going to be linked to this document. So if she clicks on it, it's going to bring her back here. It's going to leave it here until we check it as done. Um, once these are done, they're still kept up here in a stream of um, comments. I can also um, do it as a group. So say I want to do a comment. I'm going to add a comment here and I'm going to do this for Shelly. But I also want to put something in here for Lindsay. Lindsay's in her group and I need to let her know something as well. Um, please make sure to add an image with your information or whatever it is I want to tell them. Notice this drop down right here because I put two people. Um, I can assign it to Shelly or I can assign it to Lindsay. 
but both are um, going to get some kind of notification anyway. But you can put multiple people if it is a group. So comments and direct comments are very helpful when you're working in Drive and in the apps that are in Drive. Um, so hopefully you will find that helpful when you're working with your students in your virtual environment. And that is the same whether you're in slides or whether you're in docs, sheets, any of that thing, you, you can do them the same way. You're still going to see the comments up here. You can still do direct comments or whole group comments. And you're still going to have, right now it doesn't show anything as saved because I haven't added anything yet. But as soon as I start adding um, information, um, you're going to see that it automatically saves and then it'll show it right here. And then you can access the um, version history if you need to restore anything. So restoring things is extremely important. Also, it's never going to title anything automatically, but if you do uh, if you do title something down here and you keep going um, and then you just click up here, it's automatically going to pull whatever the first thing is on top. Maybe that's your title. Maybe that's the title you want to use. You don't have to keep it that way. It's just their way of trying to make things easier. So uh, maybe I didn't want it to be um, the weather unit and... I wanted it to be something like this, so it's easier for me to find when I go back in my drive. So you can name it up here. It's always going to start out as untitled. It's If you do click in the box, it's going to try to pull whatever is up top. Even if it's a sentence, it's going to try to pull that up there, and then you can just modify it. Here's where you can star things, and again, you can do that in all of the apps. So whether you're in Sheets or whether you're in Slides or whether you're in um, Forms, you can... Uh, well, forms is a little bit different, but we'll go in that. But you can star them so that way you can search for your stars. You can move it to specific folders um, or you can see what the status is. So those are basically set up the same way. Add-ons are a little bit different for each app. So when you're in, and add-ons are different than extensions. So when you're in a doc, there are lots of add-ons available. Add-ons don't have to be approved by the district. You would just go down here to get add-ons. And usually it's something that you've gotten the information from somewhere else. Like you, somebody you um, trust or follow on um, you know, YouTube or Twitter for professional development or whatever and say, this was the one I was looking for. I want to turn this doc into a form. Look, there's 7 million people that have been using that. Um, the ratings look you know, pretty good. So this was what I wanted. I'm going to go on here and yours won't show domain install it just because I have uh, district rights but yours will just show individual um, install. So this was if I was going to give it to everybody in the district. So you're going to get in here and you're going to be able to see I can play this video, I can look at the overview. You always 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 want to read some of the reviews, not always the best ones. Uh, usually, you know, you want to check out some of the ones that are not so great either and see whether there's any validity to what they're having to say, um, how many people have tried it. But you do not have to have those approved by um, the district. If we're going to push something out to everybody, we can through the admin um, console for add-ons, but we don't have to um, go that route like we do with extensions. So you will see that they're all listed here. And if I want to start one, then I'm going to um, go down to the item and it's going to uh, give me some options here on the side. This is only going to show me the add-ons that work with docs while I'm in docs. When I go into um, slides, the add-ons are going to be specific to slides. And again, it depends on you know what it is you're doing as to the add-ons that you may want to add uh, for that particular um, app. And I uh, would always use people that, you know, you're comfortable um, following them. Same thing for sheets. The add-ons are going to be specific to that uh, file type, whether it's a, a spreadsheet or whatever. Um, so you would want to make sure that the add-ons you add are, are helpful for completing whatever the task is you were trying to complete. I don't see any more questions. Okay. All right. So sharing rights, collaborate, direct comments, organizing, finding, advanced search. Um, copyright came up this morning. Copyright 
if you are uh, putting things in here that is your electronic filing cabinet, that wouldn't be any different than your filing cabinet in your classroom. You're not publishing it on, publishing it on your website. You're not um, putting it out there on Twitter. Copyright shouldn't be an issue for you in that. Uh, the question came up about putting some, a piece of text in their Google Classroom. Um, as long as that's where it is and it's not on the website and you're not putting down on Twitter and you're not putting a public you know, YouTube video up, it shouldn't be an issue because this is something you would share with your kid when you were face to face. Um, shared drives we already talked about and um, ownership we already talked about. So uh, Jamboard is one of the ones that you're probably not as familiar with. Well, let me show you. Let me show you this first because this comes up um, as helpful in Google Classroom more often than not. Um, Stephanie talked about it a little bit this morning. So Google Forms is a little bit different than the other applications, docs, slides, um, sheets, drawings. Uh, you do still have your settings here. And you can go in, as she said this morning in the classroom session, you can collect email addresses. Uh, there are times when you're going to want to, um, but there are times when you're taking a survey, like if we do a district survey, where we don't want that collected, so we leave that unchecked. Um, here is, are you only going to allow people to use, to complete this if they were in the district um, email domain? If not, you're going to uncheck that. Um, as she said during classroom session, are you going to let them do it more than once? Or are they only going to fill it out one time? You can have that uh, determination. Are you going to let them edit it after they've already submitted or they're one and done? Um, and do you want them to see the, the summary? If it's in presentation, this is like how many questions are on here? Any of you have ever done a survey or a quiz or something? You're like, how many questions are on? This is taking forever. So you can show a progress bar at the bottom so that people know how close they are getting to the end. If it's a quiz, you can shuffle the question order. Now, when they're in remote uh, virtual setting, I don't know that this is helpful. If they're in the classroom and they're sitting close enough that they can line of sight, then you might want to use that feature to shuffle. Um, and then you can either leave this uh, on or off if you want them to be able to submit again. Otherwise, you would just toggle that off. This is if you want it to say something at the very end, like, thank you for completing um, this assignment or whatever. And then if you're going to make it a quiz, like Stephanie said, you need to toggle this button on. Otherwise, it's not going to look like you want it to when you go in here and put a question. So I'm going to show you the difference of what it looks like when you're just putting in information. Uh, survey, uh, whatever, but it's not going to be graded. And then we'll come back and show you what it looks like when we've toggled that back on. So those are in settings. So you're going to name it whatever you're working on. Um, you can put a description here. You can't currently uh, insert like links and things in this, and I'm hoping that's going to come in a future update. But uh, you know, some of that right now is just not available. So you have your question right here. I'm going to say um, the three main cloud types. And then they have to select. Now over here you have your options. All of these options are available. It can be open-ended, short answer, paragraph. This is what it looks like if it's short answer. I don't know how many words that, that's going to limit them to. Um, if you want them to have more space, they can do that. Multiple choice is probably the one we're most used to seeing. Um, check boxes mean they can check more than one. So in this case, if I was going to list the three main cloud types and list them out separately, and I want them to be able to pick A and C, then I would need to use check boxes as opposed to multiple choice. Um, drop downs um, are an option where you would have multiple for um, each one. Um, linear scale is, you know, like one to five, how good do you feel about your knowledge of, you know, using Google Docs with students. Um, a multiple choice grid, this one I've had the least amount of experience with, but it, it's uh, got some interesting um, 
possibilities if you're thinking about your classroom setting and your content you might find that as a useful choice and then a checks check a box a grid is another one that uh, gives you some more options that we didn't used to have you can put the date or time in here for one I'm not sure when you would use that but it is an option like I said most people are going to be using multiple choice or check boxes um, so, so you're going to put your um, geez your cloud types in here notice over here you can add an image and when you click that it's going to take you out to I'm either going to upload it which I could upload it from whatever computer I'm on Chromebooks again don't have a lot of storage I can pull it in from a camera I can go to my drive or I'm going to go to um, a Google image search and I'm going to look for cumulus and it's going to bring up all of these options for me say I like that one so I'm going to pull that in um, and it's going to show that there if I don't like it I can X and take it out um, if I want to add another option um, I would just keep going or I'm just for the sake of time I'm just gonna throw some things in here again I can add a picture if I want I don't have to I can also move these around say I'm not happy with the way I have them I can click and drag and move them around so this is what it looks like. You can copy and duplicate this. I can decide I don't like it and get rid of it. I can toggle it on and off. I can say this is going to be a required question, a required response, or it's not. Again, you have your vertical ellipse. That's going to be the same in whatever app you're in. Um, and you can do additional, um, you have additional options in there. Uh, but then we're going to go back up here and I'm going to show if it turns it into a quiz. I'm going to toggle that on. And now I have these additional options. Stephanie talked about turning it in locked mode. Again, when you're in the classroom and you might want to use this for virtual. That just means I can't open a bunch of other tabs and I can't go out and look for the answer. Um, but Lindsay, uh, you know, often says, and she works with high school students, the reality is they might have smartphones and they might just Google it on their smartphone. You can only control so much, so, but you do have the locked mode here that you can use if you want. You can leave this on to find, to let them know um, whether they're going to get their, you know, their grade right after because it's going to be self-scoring or whether you're going to have to go back and answer the open end or, you know, score the open-ended parts. Um, and you can decide whether or not you want them to see their, their missed questions. Um, if you were going to reassess them, you might not want them to. Uh, again, with the same thing, do you not want them to see the points, value, or correct answers? You get to pick all of those choices. If you have questions about what, what exactly that means, whenever there's something like a question mark with a circle around it, you can hover over it and it'll give you some more information. So once we do that, notice that when you go back out, you now have this. So you have an answer key and a point value. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say, I'm just going to pick something. So I'm going to make this five points. And this is going to be my correct answer. This um, is very helpful. And this is a relatively newer feature. Um, I can go in and specifically give some feedback for incorrect answers. So if it's incorrect and I kind of know where their thinking is going or I want to redirect them to um, a link or a video to show them again what it was that they were working on um, to get them back on track, you have that ability to do that now and that we did not have that when uh, forms were, you know, when we first started using forms in Curry Tuck. So this has been uh, a nice improvement to the system. You can also give them feedback for correct answers. Um, you know, sometimes people just like to, to know they're doing a great job and, that, you know, that they, they're on the right track and, and making progress. So this add feedback has been a very nice feature to have. You don't have to use it. It's not a requirement, but you do have that option. You control how many points. Um, it's entirely up to you. And when you're done, you click done, and then it's going to change the way the uh, the way it looked. You could still go back and modify it um, by clicking back on it, whatever you're going to do. I just duplicated it, said I wanted to go back and do another, and I changed my mind. No, I don't like that. I'm going to um, get rid of it. You're going to have this over here on the side to add a question. 
say the next one I wanted to do, I want to do a checkbox instead. So you say, make the same choices. Um, if you pick other as an answer choice, it just means that there's going to be space that they can type something in. So if you want to have a space for them to be able to respond. Um, so this one always adds a question. You can import questions from other locations. You can um, add a title and a description to say this is going to be um, weather associated with cow types or whatever the case may be. You can have a description there as well. Um, and you can copy it or get rid of it. And then when you go down here, you can add another question. Um, I can add an image. Again, I can add a whole an image to the whole thing, not just an image for the um, question choice. Say so I want to put that in here. And I'm going to have them respond um, to it. It's going to ask you. It is going to ask you to title it, but you have the three dots again um, over here, so you can make some changes on the image itself. And then um, underneath here, I can add and say, I'm going to move this down. I'm going to add this down here, and I'm going to make it um, a paragraph, and I'm going to ask them to um, write a short paragraph. something like that if you wanted to, to put your writing component in here as well. So like you could see, you can move them around. Um, you have a lot of flexibility within here. You can still change the point value, but because it's a long answer, you're not going to be able to do uh, self-grading on that. So say you're going to get 10 points for this one, but you can still give that feedback. Um, or you can send them out to a link, or you can send them to um, a video and put feedback in there. So I did want you to see that. That was a little bit more um, than what Stephanie was talking about, the quizzes in her Google Classroom. Um, you can also include a video directly from here, which will take you out to YouTube. You can search directly from here. If you already have the link, you can just put the link directly there. And then say, I want to find videos about cloud types. As she said, and this was the biggest problem we had in the spring, if you have not clicked approved for Career Tech County Schools, your kids are going to run into problems when they try to view it on the other side. Uh, that, is, uh, that is for SIPA and COPA compliance for us to make sure that we are protecting our kids when they're online. So taking that step and just approving that video in the YouTube itself um, and Kathy will show you that this afternoon, will help your kids to not have issues when they try to play it, even if it's embedded in your Google Classroom um, or in a form like this. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to pick one. And it will put the video directly, uh, the video link directly in here. Um, again, you want to make sure that the kids have um, access to view it because you've um, pre-watched it, you're sure that it's okay, and you're saying that it's okay for any kid in Currituck County Schools to be able to see it. Um, so we've done images, we've added videos, um, add sections I'm not going to go into today because that can get a lot more complicated. It's um, useful if you're very comfortable with forms and you want to do things like pick your own adventure. Um, we did a video on that, I think, in the spring a little bit, but we, if people are interested in that, we could do one um, more step-by-step -step if you're interested in um, that, but you have to be able to use the sections for that. Now, when you do share this, and notice up here, it'll tell you your total points as you're going along. When you go in to share this, you can either attach it right here, you can put in their email addresses, um, you can copy this URL and put it in your Google Classroom. Um, this would be if you were going to embed a link on your, like your web page, uh, you can do that again. You, do you want the, their emails collected um, or not? You can attach to social media, but we don't do a lot of that with our, you know, I'm not sure you would be doing that with your remote learning, but you can um, attach the form directly to uh, your social media accounts. Um, and then this is always helpful when you go in here and you add whoever it's going to be. Uh, 
you can include the form um, in the email, which some people find helpful because then they don't have to, you know, go out and come back in uh, to another document. They're they're still right in their email. If you add collaborators, like if Stephanie and I were teaching science together and we were going to work on this document together, I could add her here. Once I add her as a collaborator, though, you need to understand that she can can change anything on this form just as well as I can. Um, notice editor is the only option. So if I add a collaborator, if you add a collaborator, a co-teacher, an administrator, um, somebody from another school, colleague uh, in your larger PLC, they can modify it. Uh, you can always still put your message here if you want to let them know why you're sharing this with them, or you can unclick that. Uh, they won't get the email address. Uh, they will get the email pop up that they have this um, added to them. Um, but that's that. And again, down here, I know we've said it, but it's we get in more uh, issues with people not understanding how they can things can be um, shared. So you want to make sure your sharing rights are as you would like them to. This would be with your students in your class. Um, if you were doing something with parents or putting it on your web page, you would want to do anybody with the link. And obviously, you wouldn't want anybody with the link to be an editor, but we're under collaborating, so that's why it looks a little bit different. Um, so collaborators can make any changes. Here's the link if you want to embed the link. You can share it through video, I mean through email. You can s collect their email responses, their email addresses in the response or not. Those are all your options. Here is where add-ons looks a little bit different in forms that it did on the previous one. I only have two here, but again um, add-ons are specific to whatever file type you're in the software, whether you're in uh, docs, sheets, or um, forms. This she showed you briefly that you can, Stephanie showed earlier, that you can see what it's going to look like for your kids. Sometimes that's extremely important if you have some wordy answer choices or like this with the images, you want to see what the, it's going to look like for the students because if you're not happy with it, you want to be able to change it before they see it. You're going to have two tabs here. This is where your questions are, and this is where your responses are going to be. We don't have any responses in this. When we do, it's going to start populating down here. And this is uh, create a spreadsheet. So the responses are going to go into a spreadsheet. I can keep this, create a new spreadsheet, or I can add them to something I've already started. Uh, that's entirely up to you. It's going to name it whatever you name it out here. Since mine is un, untitled, it's going to show untitled there. So we're going to click on it. Why do you think it picked cloud types? Is because when you come back over here, that's what I put right up here in the title of this. So it just pulled it up there. Now when I go back um, over here, you will see it as um, cloud types. And again, we've already gone through these. Remember, this is just general. Click them or don't up to you. Do you want to give them a receipt saying thank you um, if they request it or always? Again, all these radio buttons just give you more control. Do you want it just for people who are in the Curry Tech domain or is this for parents? Can they only respond once? Are you going to let them edit it after? Do you want them to see the summary of responses? Um, presentation is just some things that just might make it a little bit easier for the end user. How far is, how long is this going to be? Do you want me to shuffle the questions order because it might be a quiz? Um, do you want me to give them a chance to answer again? And then quizzes, this is where you would toggle that on or off depending on what it is you were using it for. But everything goes to a spreadsheet afterwards. And then it's automatically going to name it, whatever your title was here. And we don't have any responses in here right now, but um, it's going to show when they came in. I said collect email addresses, so that's why that is there. Um, if it was going to score it automatically, there would be your grades right here. Um, the questions, the answer, questions, answer all the way across. So that's what those responses look like when they come in attached to a form. That's why you often hear people talk about forms and sheets together. 
because they are so um, connected. If you get to the point where you no longer want to collect responses, you're cutting it off, like the quiz is done, you can't uh, enter anything else, all you have to do is toggle that off. They're going to get an error message if they try to enter answer a form after it's been cut off. Um, and you still have the three dots, the vertical ellipse, to be able to um, delete the responses. If you're going to use the form and you don't need the old responses for next year, you don't have to recreate the wheel. Um, you can download the responses. You can unlink um, the form from the spreadsheet. That would be helpful if you no longer want any of the results to come through on here, but you may be doing something else and starting. You may clear the form and, and use it. Uh, again, but you don't want it to, to add those responses to this um, particular spreadsheet later. So anybody have any questions about sharing or commenting, um, direct comments, any of those things in Drive with your kids? Okay. All right, Jamboard is probably not something you've done much with. You can't access it over here, but you can access it from the apps launcher. So Jamboard is an interactive whiteboard. These are just some samples we worked on when we did a training in the spring, and I added one from uh, to show you what it looked like with a touch screen. So Jamboard has the plus sign down here to add a new jam. When you click on it, it's going to open it up. It's going to look very much like a slide, but it is uh, truly a whiteboard. You have arrows so that once I add another frame, you can scroll to the right or to the left. So you could give your kids different frames to work on. So this is like a virtual um, whiteboard that you can use. You have these options over here for pens, marker, highlighter, paintbrush, and these different colors. Here's your eraser, your select tool, your sticky note options. In your sticky notes, you have all of these different colors, or you can make it just plain if you prefer. And then you can type directly in here. Whatever you were going to put in there. Um, and it's going to put a little sticky note up here. When you're done, you're done. You can move these around. You can change the orientation of them. You have your vertical ellipse. I can duplicate it. I can edit it. Um, I can do uh, lots of different things with it. I can resize it. I go into the corner and click it and drag in it. Um, if I choose to, I can just move the whole thing around. Those are sticky notes. I can add images from here. Again, you're going to see that this looks the same as when we were in forms. You can upload them. You can do an image search. You can pull something from Drive. You can pull something from your um, photos. We're going to do an image search. And pull up um, a different type of cloud. We're going to put this in here. Um, again, it's going to come in a certain size, but you can resize it. Um, you can change the orientation of it. You can um, duplicate it or delete it. Of course, you can just delete it directly from there, too. And remember that Control-Z undoes, and Control-Z works on, I think, all of the Google um, applications. So Control-Z always undoes the last step. Um, and then this one is like a laser pointer. I'm not sure, you know, when this would be most helpful, but when you're doing virtual learning, if you want to draw attention to something, it's not going to leave a mark that you're going to have to erase, but it's called a laser pointer, and you can use it to cut, draw your kid's attention to a particular, um, something particular on the um, board. Again, here's the undo. You notice the shortcut keystroke is Control-Z. Redo if you want to do something over and over again, like I wanted to um, duplicate this, and then um, I think you can probably do. No, it's not going to let you do that. So you can also make them um, bigger here, zoom it in or zoom it out, um, or fit it to the screen. You can change the backgrounds. This is just plain white. 
You can make dot paper if you're doing an activity with lower grade math um, and you need that. You can do writing paper. You can do um, grid if you're doing coordinate graphing or something of that nature. Uh, you can change the contrast a little bit if your students are having uh, visual impaired students and they need a particular contrast to make it easier for them to see. This looks like a chalkboard background. So you have all of those options. Um, and then you could go in here and clear it. But I can click over and it's going to add another, another tile. Um, so I can share this. This would be easier if I had another person helping me with it. But say I wanted to share this with um, Lindsay. And we tried to show this in the spring video. I want to share it with Lindsay and I want her to be able to edit it, not just view it. So once I share it with her, and again, this is untitled, that's why it's coming through that way, she's going to get a notification and she can come in here. So if I had some something that I needed her to do with me, she and I would both have access to this. So I'm going to go back to um, my Jamboard home and show you what, what uh, an, a sample looks like. Some samples that maybe would fit your your content. Okay, so here's one. We we're going to do something from social studies. It's working. So you wanted to do something with social studies and um, you wanted these to be able to move around, you wanted to be able to line some things up, um, you wanted them to match, uh, you wanted them to play a different game, you wanted them to you know, connect uh, the pieces together or, or whatever the case may be, you have um, those kind of options here. And that, since uh, I added Lindsay on whatever the one I was on, she would also have access to be able to come back in and um, do that at the same time, like I could give her access to this and she can come in here and I would say, Lindsay, I need you to do X, Y, and Z. Um, let me find another sample. This was one that just showed a variety of things that you can do with it, with the background looking like the, the chalkboard. Sorry, it's taking a minute. All right, so, um, and I know that looks, that line looks terrible, but I was trying to do it with a mouse pad because I wanted to see uh, how wobbly it would be if students were trying to, to draw with that. But um, I set this up as a coordinate graph so you could see the points were, were um, plotted and then they had to draw the line. Um, if you have a touch screen um, device, it might be a little bit easier than trying to do it. Like right now, I'm doing it with a touchpad. If they have a mouse, uh, it is still a little bit wobbly with that. So we tried to find like a pen, a, a mouse pen, that might be a little bit um, easier. But if you do have the touch screen, See, it might not all be lined up, but you can you can do some um, some drawing on there uh, if you're doing something like a math lesson, and that's the one I think of most often. Um, if you were sorting, you wanted your kids to sort. Whoops, you wanted your kids to sort, then you would go in here, and they could um, sort these into herbivores and carnivores, and then you could reset it. Control Z, Control Z, move it back. The next kid could could get to go or whatever. Um, another choice was say you were doing um, fourth grade social studies. You were talking about regions. These are just sticky notes that I put on top, um, and this was the title for what we were going to be working on. Um, so you could use it for social studies, 
and this was one we were showing if uh, we were doing an ELA um, activity and we were comparing uh, some Roald Dahl characters um, and a couple of his books. Uh, so you could still move these around. Um, you could do a Venn diagram. You could put some text on the side. Uh, you could change it out. The kids could have access to it. Now, you know, sometimes that might be a good thing and sometimes not so good thing if they keep moving things around on you. So, but you can always go back up here and after you've given them access and how to move it, you can take them back off um, and change it. You can remove the user. So say Lindsay was moving things around um, after we were you know, ready to move on with the, the discussion. And so I needed her to stop doing that. I can go in here and remove her as a user. She'll still see it. She just won't have access anymore to change anything on the uh, Jamboard. Um, I think that is the main, got another sample. This is one where I just showed what it would be like if you were gonna try to try to freehand your math on this interactive whiteboard. Again, if you're using a tablet, um, it would probably look a lot neater than uh, than my scribble right here. I was using a touch screen device um, to try and show that. And then there was another one that just, I tried to use it with text so it would look a little bit cleaner. But again, you don't want to eat up a lot of time um, trying to put that together. trying to get it to all line up. But you have some options. This was where you draw it and then it creates, uh, it, it'll change it to text for you or try to change it to text for you. So you're really just gonna have to spend a little bit of time with your curriculum, play it around with this. We wanted you to see that this is here, uh, that you have some possibilities of things that you can do within this. Um, and Jamboard was probably new for everybody. So I don't know if that is helpful or not. We did not go through every single piece of it. Somebody suggested that maybe um, you would have questions specifically instead of going through every one. Uh, so I'm gonna leave that up to you. Wendy's asking, student with access to it, do they have to have the tab out of Meet and into their email to get it to open it? Um, Okay, so once you share it with them, they would be able to click on it, and then they they would have a they would have two tabs open. Yes, and while they're moving it, you're on the meet screen and you're presenting. Everybody else is going to see Lindsay move it or whoever it is. Again, this is where it is extremely, I think, important for you to partner with somebody. Like if Deb and I were gonna practice this out, she's gonna create a uh, Jamboard and she's gonna share it with me and, and we're gonna move some things around together so she can see the functionality from her standpoint. She's the teacher, I'm, I'm acting as a student. And so she can see how that's gonna work out um, on her end. So that is, is so that is really um, important for you to just try that out before you have the kids come in um, and do that with you. If you can have a partner or somebody, you can just try a few of these things out with. You can um, create assignments in there, but it's not like it's not like there's a dashboard that you can go in and say. Um, it's not like a dashboard that you can go in and say this kid is going to do this one. Um, this kid is going to do this. You could have this Jamboard set up and you could have that shared with these five students. You could have this other Jamboard set up and that's shared with these other four students because that's specific to what they're working on. And then you could embed those links in your Google Classroom. You could do it that way. Um, well, you want to keep the kids to have as few steps as possible. So if you could use your Google Classroom like Stephanie and Kim Jackson with the, the middle school and then um, I think it was Sean Graham at the high school, you're gonna, they were explaining this morning, you're going to use that as your anchor and you want them to keep going to that. Yes, they're going to get some notifications in their email, but if you can keep them coming to your classroom to get to your meet, to classroom to turn in their assignments, to classroom to get the link for the video, to classroom to respond back so that you're keep tracking that for attendance or whatever it is. Um, that's gonna be your main point because you can link docs, sheets, slides, 
jam boards. You can put all of these things in your Google Classroom and that's where they're going to come back to each time. All right, does anybody have a question about um, any of those things? I know lots of you are from the district and have been in the district for a while, so Google Drive is not new to you. I will tell you we are paying for the enterprise um, version so that you will not lose the record feature. Um, as part of that, you will also get some additional uh, access to things, and we'll go over that later as we find out more, more about what that's going to mean for us. Um, but is there anything else that you need answered, worked through, in prep for, for what you're getting ready to do when students get their devices and you're ready to start your remote learning as far as just knowing anything about Drive, finding things, sharing things? Oh, yes. Somebody asked a copy about force copy? Yes, absolutely. So let me show you how to do that. So say I'm going to, I'm just going to pick something. Um, I want to share this, but I do not want them to change it. So when I get the link, oh, I got to add somebody first, sorry. No, I don't want to do it that way. Let me pull something else real quick. Uh, let me pull a doc. All right, I'm just going to pull up something like this. Say I'm going to share this, and I'm going to come over here. And down here, I'm going to select the link. So I'm going to copy this link. Notice it says, and you're going to make sure which group, somebody with Curry Tech, yes, view, yes, but I'm going to copy this and click done. Now say I'm going to go over here and I'm going to, um, I, you're probably doing it in your Google Classroom, but I'll just show you real quick over here. Say I'm going to share something um, with Byron and I'm going to put the link in here. Notice the end of this link has edit question mark, USP equals sharing. I'm going to go to the end of that link and I'm going to backspace, backspace up to that forward slash, and I'm going to make this a copy. When I do that, when he clicks on that, it's going to look like this. Now he's going to wonder why I'm sitting in that link, but it's going to look like this, and then it's going to say, would you like to make a copy of and then um, that way they cannot change yours. It's a forced copy. So you copy the link, you backspace up to that last forward slash, and you put C-O-P-Y, and that forces a copy. Now, if you're in Google Drive, like uh, Stephanie was showing earlier, um, you can set it up when you put the assignment in there, and it's going to say, make a copy for each student and add the kid's name, which is super helpful so that you don't have to go back and try to figure out who was doing what um, in there. But forced copies are great, especially if you're sharing with other people and you want to make sure that they don't change anything um, that was yours. Does anybody else have? Yes, you can do the same thing on um, slides. You can also do a forced copy. Any of those that you can create a link, you can backspace. Back to that last forward slash and put copy. So anyway, I know I didn't go through each individual one because lots of you are experienced teachers. Is there anything that you need help with, access to, uh, understanding of, moving forward um, for working in Drive as far as your virtual learning for your kids? Everybody good? Maybe. Deb's, Deb's at least, Deb and Donna are at least non like it's going to be okay. All right. If, um, like I said, I did, I want to value your time. I know I, I, 
I fully am with you. I'm looking at this. If I was starting my, you know, science lessons on day one after they've got their device, what would I be doing? So if you need more individualized help, if you are interested in more specific information about doc slides, Jamboard, again, Jamboard is just going to take a little bit of time and somebody who's willing to do it with you. If you're planning on it being interactive and your kids are doing it with you, you need somebody to test it out with. I wouldn't do it day one with my kids. Um, but you, you could think of some of the possibilities I try to show you at least how you could do it with some. Um, linking Dreambox to Classroom. I am not 100% sure about that, but I will find out. I'll make a note and find out about linking Dreambox um, to Classroom. I know that you guys have training coming up, um, and I will get that question um, asked to see. And then anybody else have a question? But I will get back to you, Dana, about linking Dreambox. All right, if you guys come up with any of the clever apps. Got it. Okay. If you come up with other things that you need, again, we're trying to honor your time. Try not to take you through things that you have already seen before or know. Um, and I know you're trying to get set up for your kids and you're worried about your, you know, planning for that. If there are other things that come up, please contact um, one of us. Uh, there's Lindsay, Jason, Kathy, me, um, you know, Shelly, Ken. There are lots of us out here who, who want to help you. And if um, you need some additional support, please let us know. So thank you very much. Have a good day.